everyone, my name is Bethany and I'm the training manager here at Yesware. And today I'm gonna to show you how to set up a campaign in Gmail. I'll show you how to add recipients to a campaign, create a multi-touch campaign, and personalize your campaign so each recipient gets a customized communication. Yesware's campaigns feature allows you the ability to essentially map out a plan of how you want to reach out to and engage with your recipients, whether that means sending emails, making phone calls, including other customer touch points, uh, reaching out via LinkedIn, etc. And we will automate some pieces of that for you and then help you to stay on top of the manual follow-ups. And the first thing to know about campaigns is that it lives in two places. So you're looking at the campaigns dashboard here, which is located at the top of Gmail. And then within the Yesware sidebar, there is this campaigns tab, and this is going to house all of your manual to do tasks. And to get started with campaigns, you just want to click on the blue new campaign button here in the upper right. Give it a name, something that makes sense. So that way, when you come back and use that campaign again, you can easily find it. And the next stage of this is to add recipients. Now I do want to note that you can add recipients now, but you don't have to add recipients now. So if you want to skip over the add recipients and just come down to the touches section and build out your plan of how you want to reach out to and engage with your recipients, you can do that, set it up, save and exit, and then always come back and add recipients later. I'm going to add them now though, just so we can show you how that's done. And there are a couple different ways that you can add recipients. For those of you with the Yesware Enterprise subscription, you can import a contact or a lead list from Salesforce or search Salesforce for an individual and just add someone individually. And then those of you with a premium or enterprise plan, you can just type into this table. So all these fields here are editable, including the column headers or you can upload a CSV file. Now, once you've gotten your recipients in there or made the decision to skip adding recipients, the touches section is where you build out this plan of how you want to reach out to your recipients. And we have six different methods of doing so, which we call touch types. The first is an automated email. And this allows you to put together your email here choose if you want to include your Gmail signature and then schedule when you want this email to be sent out and we will send it out for you automatically on the back end. Manual email is similar in the sense that you would compose the email here. However, it requires some human intervention to get it to send. And this is where that sidebar comes in. So you'd create your email here and then come over to the sidebar and to take action on that email, you just click on the to do card as we call it, click the word email, and this is going to pull up the email that you've already composed in that compose area. And then you can send it and it'll check it off the list. The next touch type is a phone call. And this gives you the ability to put together a call script, voicemail script, you know, bulleted list of what you want to talk about here. And then again, the sidebar will populate a to-do card that will allow you to log the outcome of the call, which will have an impact on the next stage of the campaign. And then for those of you with the Yesware Enterprise subscription, you can log that call to Salesforce. And to show you what that looks like here in the sidebar, again, just click on the to-do card, click on the word call. If this recipient was added via Salesforce, and if there's a phone number for this person in Salesforce, that will display. Or if you've uploaded a CSV with a phone column that you filled out that information, the phone number will show here. Otherwise, you would just get the phone number however you would normally get a phone number to make a phone call and then click on the word call here. And then this is going to pull up a dialog box that will have your talking points, again, that you have written in that campaign compose area. 
If you have an enterprise plan, it's going to show you the Salesforce contact record so that you can have any of the activity history at a glance here. And then most important, what happened on the call? Did you connect with your recipient? Did you not connect with them? Do you want to leave them in the campaign or remove them? And then add any notes from the call. Click save and create new task. So this saves the outcome of the call and checks it off the list over there in the sidebar and helps you to create a task in Salesforce. So this will automatically associate it with the correct contact and account. Pull in any campaign data, which you can use for reporting. And then it's also going to have the notes that you've entered over here. And then you have to hit this save button to actually log that to Salesforce. So this save and create new tasks, excuse me, save and create new task logs the outcome of the call and then helps you to create the new task in Salesforce. And then this save button actually logs that call to Salesforce. Now, custom task can be anything that you want it to be. Essentially, you're just writing yourself a little note here in this compose area to take an action on something. And things that we see people use this for are maybe starting your cadence with setting up a Google alert or perhaps doing some LinkedIn research. Maybe you want to send a handwritten note at some point in your cadence or send a swag bag. People love free stuff. Uh, also reaching out via Facebook, LinkedIn, again, anything that you want it to be, you're just writing yourself a note here. And then again, the sidebar will prompt you to take an action on something. So this is a custom task here. So I just wrote a note for myself that I wanted to send a handwritten note, reminded myself that stamps are in the closet. I'd go ahead, put that note together, send it out, come back to my desk and mark this as done. And it will check it off the list. The last two touch types refer to our LinkedIn Sales Navigator integration. So if you happen to subscribe to LinkedIn Sales Navigator and have a team or enterprise license with them, you can send a connection request or an in-mail directly from the sidebar as a part of your campaign cadence. If you don't have LinkedIn Sales Navigator and find that those are confusing or distracting, you can actually turn that off in the Preferences menu under Integrations. If you scroll down to the bottom, just toggle off that LinkedIn Sales Navigator integration, and then you won't see those two extra touch types and you'll just have the main four. Now, when it comes to composing the content of your emails, you can you know, start from scratch, or you can also use a template. So if you have a template that seems to be working well for you, you know, scale up your messaging a bit by clicking this insert template button within campaigns. And you may notice that I have a ton of text fields here in my template for company, first name, capital raise product release promotion growth, comparable customer, job title, their product and their idol. And in my CSV, I have matching column headers. So as long as the columns match exactly with those text fields, when you go to preview and personalize, which you should always be doing, you'll see that I now have three very hyper personalized emails going out to my recipients here. So this leaves room for personalization. And if you don't start your campaign using a template and just kind of start from scratch to get those text fields in there, you can use this insert merge field button. This is actually going to look at all those column headers and help you to pull them in with the correct formula. So just to kind of illustrate that a little bit further, I'm actually going to add a column here, put in some letters, and some data to pull in. And you might choose to use this, especially if you're importing a contact or lead list from Salesforce, and maybe add a column here and just call it personalization and add a quick note for each person on the list, especially if you have a, a smaller list, and just include that personalization in the body of this email by going to insert merge field, you know, find that personalization column there, 
And then when you go to preview and personalize, you'll see that it has pulled that in. But let's say, you know, just for example, you have a longer list, which means that you don't necessarily have the time or inclination to go, you know, add a column, do a, a personalization sentence for each person, but maybe you just want to call out that you have seen someone at an event recently. In the preview and personalize section, like the name suggests, you can also personalize here. So maybe we saw Brandon at an event. So we'll find Brandon's name here in this list, click into his compose area and say, it was nice to see you at the event. Click apply personalization. And now it was nice to see Brandon at the event, but Alaya and Carolyn do not have that extra note of personalization. And then when you're done putting together the initial stage of the campaign, you can continue to add touches with this add next touch button. There's no limit to the number of touches that you put together. You can put together as many as you would like in any combination. You can mix and match these in any way that makes sense for you. And you just need to decide the number of business days between each touch. And the language here is that if there is no connection, start the next touch. So what that means is if your recipient does not reply to your initial email touch, go ahead and send out the next touch. If they do remove them from the campaign, or if you've marked for a phone call task that you did not connect with them, go ahead and start the next touch. If you have, remove them from the campaign. But you can actually change that in the settings section by unchecking remove recipients after connection so that if someone replies and you don't want them to be removed from the campaign, they can still remain in. So it'll change the language here to just after four business days, regardless of whether or not they reply, go ahead and start that next touch. So it all kind of depends on what your needs are there. And then do you want to track links and template attachments? If yes, keep that checked. If not, uncheck it. And then for those of you with premium plans, if you have a CRM that provides a BCC email address, you can plug that in there and then we will BCC your CRM with, for each individual email. If you have an enterprise plan, if you're reaching out to individuals who have a contact or lead record in your Salesforce environment, that's going to automatically sync to Salesforce. So you can skip right over this BCC email address. And lastly, you need to acknowledge that Gmail has a daily message limit because with campaigns, you can send up to a thousand emails, which means that if you're sending out a thousand emails in a day and then just going about your daily business in Gmail, you could potentially lock yourself out of Gmail. And another thing to keep in mind is that we do stagger our sends, meaning that for automated emails, we send them out little by little, just so that we won't have an impact on your spam score. Now I'm going to go ahead and start campaign because we've already added our recipients. If you haven't added recipients, you can save and exit, but if you've added recipients, you want to start the campaign. And great, we have added our recipients. They are now considered in flight, which just means that they're actively going through the stages of the campaign. And from this page, you can actually preview what your recipients are going to get by clicking on their name here. And then you're able to see and preview what each email will look like. And you can also personalize here by clicking personalize touch. And if you started this campaign with an automated email, that would just go out on the back end, but we started it with a manual email. So to take an action on that, again, you want to come to the sidebar and refresh. And now those touches are in there. And that is how you get started using campaigns.